This video is going to go over setting up the Ethernet IP module for the LJV. So what the screen that we're looking at right now is RS Logix 5000. Um, it's going to be for programming, control logics, com um, compact logics, uh, PLCs, Allen Bradley PLCs. So uh, I'm just going to hop into it. We're going to walk through these steps, um, how to get this thing set up, how to connect to the unit, and then also get an idea as to where we can find data. And after that, I'm going to show a, a quick uh, couple of steps on how to, for example, change the offsets of one of our outputs. So um, I've already set it up so that this one is connected to the PLC, but let's go ahead and start a new program. So here, uh, I'm just going to say these are my uh, sample, or this is the PLC information. Here's going to be a sample here, um, and then click OK. This is going to create a workspace for this program. All right, so simply to connect to our CBEP100 module, uh, you go to I.O. configuration. Uh, we go under our PLC, and we find Ethernet. Once we get to Ethernet, we right-click new module and for all of our units we always choose it to be a generic Ethernet module so here we find that click OK uh, we're going to name this CBEP100 um, and for your uh, purposes I would recommend naming it exactly as I have shown here as we're going to bring in some tags that are not generally provided here I'm going to find the IP address. Uh, one thing to know is the IP setting tool. I know many of you have not really used this, uh, but this can be a useful tool. It's used for setting the IP address of the units as well as just viewing what all the iPad IP addresses are. So here I found my CBEP100 module, um, and this is the IP address that is currently assigned to it. So that's what I want to use here. So I'll go ahead and put that in here. Next, it's going to be connection parameters. So this is simply following the manual. So if we go into the manual, we go to chapter 5, um, and we go to configuration procedure. So everything is already laid out in our manual. You simply need to follow the steps. Um, those two are what I had before. And we're going to copy these parameters. Well, that didn't work. Um, so 100, 101, 78, 78, 101. I believe this was 30, 31. And then this you can leave as 1. So this is just going to be where to um, place our information, how to um, how much space to make for it. And then uh, the communication format, we're going to use a DINS, a double integers. Um, this can actually be anything the, the customer uh, really desires, how they want to lay out their data. Um, for my purposes, I've used DINS. So click OK. Um, the request packet interval, um, this is going to be how fast we're going to refresh our data. So let's say I want to do 5 milliseconds. Um, so this data is going to bounce back and forth and refresh every five milliseconds. Click Apply, click OK. All right, so once we've done that, I see my Ethernet module right down here. Uh, you get the icon after you install the EDS file. One thing to remember is that the EDS file only includes the icon and some vendor information. So it doesn't include a lot of the other information that many customers expect to find in these files. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the data that we can currently see from the CBEP100 module. So to do that, go to controller tags. Let's double click that. I now see my module here. So inputs. I choose inputs. And this is the data that I can see. Um, the next step that you will want to do is TMG has prepared all the tags for uh, all this data. So all this data currently has no label. 
So to import the tag, we're going to do tags and logic comments. And we're going to choose this file here. Um, you can leave all of these as default. Choose import. And you're going to see all of these are populated. So now if I were to click into, say, this one, I now see that this bit right here is an error status. Um, and here we see everything is labeled out. And for example, if I were to go to my measurement values, here are my measurement values. So this is um, something that your customer can now do so that they can easily view where all of our data is. One of the most common questions we get from customers is where this information is. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is going to hop online. So go online. Um, oh, whoops, need communication path. Let's go ahead and choose it over here. I see my AB Ethernet's IP. Choose that. Choose my module right here. Click through there. And here it is. So that's my um, PLC. All right, so let's go ahead, choose Go Online. So this is going to connect everything. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the file. So this is a new program. When you choose Download, you're downloading this current file on your computer to the controller. So download Offline Project to Controller. Let's go ahead and do that. Sure. Okay, so what we're seeing here now is values updating here. Here, when I go down to my measurement values, I see my actual measurement values, some of them updating right here. So let's go ahead and pull up LJ Navigator and have a look at what we're actually seeing there. So here, we see that these values reflect the numbers that I'm seeing over here. Um, what you should remember is that these numbers that you see um, over here do not have a decimal point. So to simply uh, to get the number in millimeters, as we would see on our display, all you need to do is divide this number by, I believe it was uh, 100,000, and you'll get the correct numbers. So if your customer ever asks you, how to get those numbers or what these numbers mean, that is what it is. All right, so that's honestly all it is for viewing this data. Um, so it's actually very easy to get this set up and view the measurement data. From there, they can go ahead and do whatever they want with it. The next step that I want to do was show um, some quick programming as far as changing some values on the unit. So what we see here is known as cyclic communication or um, implicit communication. So this is communication that's always going on in the background and um, just working on its own. To change a lot of the values or get maybe profile data from the LJV, you need to use something called explicit communication or a messaging communication. This is going to be where we need to send the PLC or the LJV a certain command in order to get this information across. What I've done is I've already made a sample program for this. So this is going to be change offset sample. Let's go ahead and open this. I don't need to save anything there. So a sample program that we've made, we look at the controller tags. Again, um, all the information is already in here. And the program. So here's our ladder program, uh, main routine. And it's, this one's a very simple program. I have one rung, as it's called. Um, I have a toggle here that I can manually turn on or off. And these are the messages that I use to change a value on the LJV. Um, so the process is laid out actually also in our manual. So it's, it's quite simple to follow. Um, we go to 3, 4, message communication. And then let's go ahead and look at the actions which can be completed with message communication. So what we want to do is write settings to a measurement, uh, measuring instrument, essentially writing values to the LJV. Um, this particular one is saying, let's change the offset of out one. So what we do is 
because it's a message command, we go to, let's just say controller tags for now, edit tags, and I want to create a new tag. I've already made a couple of them here, but I'm going to run through how to make it real quick just to demonstrate. So sample, whoops, sample message, and then over here, before pressing enter, let's go ahead and choose message. So that's now a new message that I've created. Once I've created that message, I go here to the main routine. Um, for sample purposes, I'm going to just go ahead and show how that was made. We go to input output, choose MSG message. Let's go ahead and put it down here for now. I go ahead and choose that sample message that I made. And then I can choose this. Um, once we're in here, we simply need to follow what was written in the manual. So it says my service ID should be 10. Let's see if we can get this all up on the same screen at the same time. Oh, I guess not. Oh, that's a shame. Too bad. Um, so service code is 10. We'll also see the class ID was 6B. The instance, uh, this is actually where you choose the program. So for writing data, it would be writing pro or data to program 0 would be 200. And then the attribute, um, this d assigns what we actually want to change. In our case, uh, they said 998. That's the hex value, 998. So we put that there. And then we choose a source element. So this is going to be another value which we define to be the value that we send over. So this can be my offset value. I've made that earlier too. And I tell it the offset value was a dint, which is four bytes. So I just tell it, make that four bytes and path. Over here, I choose, I want to send it to the CBEP100 module. Apply, and you're done. So that's all it takes to create a message. Um, I've already done a couple of them here, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this one as we don't really need it. One thing that we saw earlier, so here looking in the manual, we have the attribute IDs, um, device ID or service code and class ID. Those are pretty much defined, so um, just know for writing data it's 10. Um, class ID is always going to be 6B. Instance is going to be your program. Attribute um, is going to be where to write it to. And just so I can demonstrate that really quickly, um, we saw that that one was 998. So we scroll through here. Out1, if we wanted to change out1 offset data, 998. That's where we got it from. So everything is laid out, attribute ID, um, inside this manual already. So what we're going to do next is change the offset value. So this is the live screen here. What I've done here is I'm going to go to my controller tags, go to my offset value, my change that to 500,000. So that's going to correspond to 5. Remember, we divide by 100,000. And then I'm going to go here. Again, we're going to go online. Oh, sorry, I forgot to do this again. Go online. We're going to download this to the controller or PLC again. Yes. OK. So now we're online, run mode. Everything's good. We see green. Main routine. And then I'm going to toggle this. So go ahead, toggle a bit. I toggle a bit. I see all of these went green, so this DN means done. All these went through, and I see this value change. So that is an example of changing the offsets through the PLC, through the CPEP100. Um, one thing I actually forgot to go over earlier was these two messages over here. So this one is my message for changing the offset value. Uh, one thing when changing or data on the unit, 
you need to send two more requests after it. One of them is going to be to request that the data be updated, and then another one to actually update the data. Both of these, again, are laid out directly in the manual. So very easy to find. The customer would simply need to copy these two commands right here, reflect, or requesting to reflect setting right area and updating the setting right area. So again, customer would simply need to make whatever changes they want to make, and then at the very end, go ahead and send these two commands to make sure all that data is now updated on the controller. All right. So that's really all there is to PLC communication, um, getting t um, everything talking, getting all the tags in there. All right. Thank you.